Hello and welcome to The Last Tackle on LoveRugbyLeague.com. I'm James Gordon and I'm joined as ever by Drew Derbyshire. Delighted to have former Super League winner, Lance Todd Trophy winner, Challenge Cup winner, and most importantly, Witness Viking scrum half, Matty Smith, in for the first episode of the season. Uh, new look show this year, we're hoping to have a guest on every week, make it a little bit more, uh, a bit more of a personal touch and, and talk about um, some things that maybe you wouldn't... Um, know about previously. We're going to preview the new Super League season, we're going to preview the Championship season, we're going to talk about Matty's career, some trivia, Drew's got 13 questions as part of his new feature we want to do. We'll talk about some of the uh, news as well. If you want to get involved please do leave comments on the Facebook page or the YouTube wherever you're watching it and don't forget to keep it on loverugbyleague.com for all the latest. And um, We were just talking off there uh, about this so we might as well start with the, the Israel fallout uh, story. Um, Matty, obviously you would have possibly been a teammate of him if you'd have stayed in the south of France, but a, a massive a massive news story, but massively controversial. I'd say, yeah, very controversial, isn't it? And, and in some ways, I feel very, you know, it's disappointing as well from a, from a, from a, you know, our game from a Super League point of view. Um, obviously he's banned from, from NRL, he's banned from RFU, and, and we seem to have, have turned that a blind eye a little bit, and, and Catalans have signed him. Uh, in terms of rugby players, he's, he's a fantastic player, isn't he? Uh, you know, you can't deny him that. But I think it, it's a little bit disappointing. I think for 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 our game, really. What What's it like in the change room when you have like a a player that's maybe been up to no good or done something you know controversial? Yeah, well, I suppose it's. I mean, it, you know, people make mistakes. All that you know, I've certainly made mistakes throughout my career in terms of you know, maybe going out when I shouldn't or, or, or something like that, you know, I think uh, people do make mistakes, but I think his mis mistake was pretty big, wasn't it, and, um, you know, offended quite a hell of a lot of people, and um, and, and bringing the game into disrepute like that is, is not good for the game, so, um, you know, for me, it's it's a, it's a difficult one, um, there's going to be a lot of people out there not, not happy with it, and, well, I suppose Catalans, you know, they've signed him now, and, um, you know, they're willing to have given you know a second chance and, and we'll see how it goes but I don't think um, a lot of people he's gone down you know well with a lot of people I guess there'll be a few people after his head during the game which could get interesting I suppose mm -hmm. well it would have been interesting to see if uh, Keegan Hurst had stayed at Wakefield um, but he's obviously gone to, to Halifax for, for this season I think there will be I think and, and I think that that'll be an easy way for other players the opposition players to get into his head a little bit, uh, if they have a little mutter after after a tackle in his ear, uh, rile him up a bit. Um, he could possibly get a yellow card or sent off then with uh, with his actions back. Um, but I, I I just don't get why Catalans have signed him. If I'm honest, I think it's a bad look for Super League. Uh, I don't think there's anything. Um, I don't I don't think there's such thing as any publicity is good publicity. I think it's bad bad for the game, especially uh, signing two or three days before the Super League season kicks off. With, We've got such a, a great game on our hands in Wigan Warrington, and all the attention has now been on Izzy Fallow instead of uh, the, the fantastic players that Wigan have signed and, and that Warrington have signed for this season. Obviously, I got I got roped into going on LBC Radio yesterday to talk about the the Falau thing, and and there there's obviously a bit of a a suggestion that he's not done anything, he's not being charged of any criminal offence or anything like that, and um, there was a little bit of that in the RFL statement, wasn't there? Um, Catalan have said if he comes out and does anything else, he's gonna get he's gonna get elbowed, you know, pretty much straight away. Anyway, um, I think someone said that if if it was if me or you had said it in our job, would we have a chance of getting a job anywhere else? But I made the point. Well, yeah, well, okay, he's a rugby player, but what sort of profession does it stop? Because he's got to earn a living somehow, I suppose. But yeah. if it, let's uh, let's he's, he's a massive name in in rugby union rugby league. He killed it in rugby league before he went to to union, but. You, we were speaking off her before, like, what happens if it was just like a, a, a young English kid at a random Super League club who continued to make these tweets? Yeah. Not apologise for him, but then make the tweets again and, and again. Uh, it, it, let, let's just remember that it's not just once that he's, he's made these tweets, it's, it's several times, and he's not apologised for it yet. Uh, a lot of people seem to bring up the Zach Hardacre incident from a couple of years ago where he received a, a five-match ban. For homophobic comments, but the thing is, the, the difference between Arreca and Fallo is Arreca apologised and he had several meetings with LGBT um, 
communities. Yeah, like almost to, like a, to a, a recap, more, almost yeah, like a recap yeah, thing. To learn more about it. And, it, and he apologised, and obviously it's not happened since, whereas with Fallow, it's, it <clears throat> just keeps to, it seems to be coming and coming. What, what do you think, Matty, about the good the good news, all news is good news or bad news argument? Because Martin and I tweeted yesterday, and as much as you might not agree with it, Sonny Bill Williams and Israel Folau are playing in the Super League next season, yeah. two of the biggest names in, in world rugby. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's great for I don't think it looks great on Catalans. I think the the old publicity thing. I don't think they've done it for that. I think they've they've done it because they've seen that they can get Israel Folau, no no one else wants him and, and they can get him for you know, he's, a, he's a good rugby league player at the end of the day. But um I just think he'll end up being being bad for the game and, and bad for the bad for Catalans really. Um because like you said, you know, he's not he's not actually apologised for his mm. actions, he truly believes what he believes and um you know, so is it a matter of time before he slips up again, before he well, says the wrong things again and um it's just gonna bring, you know, the game again into disrepute and it's gonna look bad on Catalans. I'm sure we'll hear plenty more about the Falau situation, so we'll move on from it because we don't wanna we wanna talk to Matty about all sorts <laughs> of things. But we'll we'll stay on Catalan I suppose, because mm. Matty, you were at Catalan last season, obviously it didn't work, work out for one reason or another. Just yeah. tell us a little bit what it's like being a player that, you know, obviously, you know, we talk about the M62 corridor and all that, yeah. and you've probably not had to move very far to go to any of the clubs you've been at, yeah. but then moving your whole life to the south of France, what's that like? Uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, I think it was a great experience, not just for me, for, for you know, for Jen, for, for my little kids. Um, and as a family, we, we, we quite, kind of learned a lot about the, the, the kind of situation. Um, but, but for us, and, and in particular for, for Jen and the kids, it was difficult, um, you know, being isolated over there, not having family around you, um, everyone speaks French, but you, you know it, uh, <laughs> you know, it was difficult and, and I think you don't really think about it when you, you're kind of making these decisions on what it's going to be like, you know, you see the opportunity and living in the south of France and the sun shining, you kind of jump at the chance at the time, but you know, um, having got over the, it, it was it was hard, but again, it was something that I won't want to change. And, and even though there was ups and downs throughout the year, I think as a as a family we, we learn a lot about ourselves, and and we can take a lot lot from it. Like, did you feel a little bit put out by the the Josh Drinkwater situation? Because obviously you'd signed before you'd presumably signed before he effectively led him to the top, to the Challenge Cup, yeah. and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, we want we sort of wish we could have kept him, but we've already yeah. signed Matty. I mean, what yeah. does that make you feel like as a player when that's? Yeah, I think there was probably an, an agenda behind it as well. Obviously, you've seen him, you know, sign sign back there now. So, um, you know, and that eventually come to me leaving the club, and um, it wasn't just that situation. But I think, you know, you know, deep down they probably won that Challenge Cup, and you know, I'd already signed months before that. So, um, you know, only 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 the club and and Steam and people like that really know that the, the deep down what what. What the situation was, but you know, in terms of, of, of us as well as a family, we, we probably, you know, we probably made the decision. I would have only ever done the end of this year anyway. I'd mm. have done my contract, but um, I think it was the right decision in the end for us to, to come back to England and be around family. Yeah. How tough is the the language barrier over there? Because I'm not not just with your your French teammates, but I mean yeah. living in and around the. Perpignan area. It's difficult, and as you can understand, that you know French the French people they want. They, 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 they can speak English, you know, quite a lot of them, but they don't want to, you know. Yeah, so yeah. you've got to try and, you know, make you know make that effort to, to kind of you know speak their language first. And, and we did have lessons. I mean, we had we had one lesson a week over there for an hour, and uh, you know it's, it's definitely not enough. <laughs> you probably need to be doing you know two hours a day with with a, with a teacher, and you know, and she had like ten people in that lesson as oh, well. Right. So it wasn't like one on one. So it was it was hard to obviously to. To, to, to speak, I think you've got to be at least over there for three or four years before you even kind of pick anything up. So uh, it was difficult, and you you know you when you're in the supermarket and you, you can't find something, and you, you want to ask the question, you tend not to ask it. And uh, I I found that the hardest. I mean, you know, even when you go down the the local shop or the pub or whatever, you can have a conversation like this, and it's great. You miss that over there yeah. because you, you you are isolated and you've got your teammates and. But I think more so for Jen and the kids, it was difficult. You you, sw- you said about you just sorted the move out before obviously that all happened. What's it like being in that situation where because obviously the the anti tampering deadline's May first, whatever it is now. Yeah. So in theory, you can sign on May first. You've then got to play out the full season with your current club before you go somewhere else. 
is that a weird thing for a player, to, a weird position for the player to be in? Because obviously you want to sort out your contract, yeah. don't you? But at the same time, it must be strange thinking, oh, well, I'm joining them next season, but I've got to play for these this season. Yeah, well, I was in a difficult, again, difficult situation at St. Helens. You know, I wasn't playing and um, I was overlooked by, by you know, Danny Rich at the time. So for me, it was, I signed the contract and I wanted to go straight away. Mm. But because you're not involved as much, you know, when you're not playing and, and I knew that the position I was in, but... At the end of the day, you're getting paid off that club, and you've got to give, you know, everything for that club. And if you get your chance to play, then you, you, you will take it. But um, it was it was hard because I was in a difficult situation at St. Helens, and you know I'd signed this contract, and I was really looking forward to going over to the South of France and and being kind of the number seven and the, and the you know the, the someone who they built the team kind of around. And um, uh, but yeah, I still had a contract to uphold with St. Helens, so. Um, and, all's, and I think all you want to do as a player is to play. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to train every day and, and then come the end of the week you're not playing again. So it was it was hard, but uh, and it was hard being my own time club as well, being St. Helens. Mm -hmm. I think more so than it would have been, you know, playing for anyone else. Um, yeah. And but you, you spent four or five seasons at Wigan. You had so much success at Wigan. You, you nearly had a trophy every season. Yeah. Um, and then you went to St. Helens, and then that first season at Saints. It was it was ruined by injuries, really. Mm. Uh, you couldn't seem to get a, a clear run in the team going. How, how difficult was it going from so much success and being yeah. in the team every week at Wigan? Yeah. To to kind of being an outcast at Saints because you didn't really get that first chance in that first season, and then in the second season, obviously, you fell out of favour. How, how difficult yeah. was was it to adjust because it, you go from such a massive high to a massive low? Yeah, I mean, the, like you just mentioned, the four and a half years at Wigan, I don't think could have gone any better. Um, you know, in terms of the injuries as well, the trophies we won, um, and and Wigan obviously suited me, suited my style of playing, my style of thinking. Mm. Um, you know, playing with some great players, and like you say, going from the, winning the grand final to going sixteen, signing for Saints, and the first game breaking my leg, it wasn't a great start, to be honest. But um, you know, this is the game, and I think that's sport, and, and and sometimes them injuries happen. You know, didn't quite quite recover from that. I got you know, come back from the leg break. Um, I think it was round, round about round nine, round ten. Um, got six games, tried try to get my fitness back, and, and my fitness was coming. And then did my eye, you know, did my eye against against Leeds. John Wilkin foam in the eye, and um, that kept me out for a further, you know, basically all the year. Then uh, come back for the playoffs, but it was just a difficult transition, yeah. And, and probably, you know, struggled probably off the off the field as well with with them injuries. You know, didn't quite know. How to deal with them and, and, and being again being St. Helens, all you want to do is go back and kind of right the wrongs and, and, and be successful at your own time club. And with that, you know, not happening, uh, it was difficult to take again and, and quite didn't quite recover from that. So, uh, how, did, how did it come about leaving Wigan? Did, was it your choice or did Wigan have a word and said, uh, I suppose in the end, it was it was a bit of both. I think, um, I think being totally honest with you, I think when you become. You know, I signed a contract from, from Salford, and it was a decent contract, my first contract. But when we won the double in 2013, um, there was renegotiations in that contract, and I signed a new deal, which was four years, on, on quite a lot more money. Um, and I think when you get to that bracket of being on that kind of money, you become vulnerable a little bit, you become open, because um, if, if a club wants to kind of up George Williams' contract at the time, he was doing really well. Someone's got something's got yeah, to give. Yeah, they need, need to maneuver in the south. Exactly, yeah. something's got to give. So you, then you become a little bit vulnerable, and you know, I think at the time, you know, Wayne, you know, there was interest from St. Helens and all that. And first thought, I think Wayne, you know, said, "No, no, you know, we want to keep you and all this." And you know, things happen, and and you know, we sport again, and uh, it was kind of, you know, he come in and said, "You know, I think it's a good deal for you to take," which that said to me then, you know, at the time that. You know, should, should I go now? Am I really wanted as much as I was at the club? Um, and it was a great deal from St. Helens in over four years. So, you know, I decided to take it in terms of just, you know, Wigan not quite wanting me as much to stay and, and, and myself. You know, going back to my hometown club was a massive opportunity. And like I say, you know, it was I jumped at the chance in the end because I felt like working with Kieran as well, Kieran Cunningham. It was kind of my hero growing up and, and getting to, you know, I've played with him in the past, but getting to work with him, you know, was a good opportunity. So, you know, it was kind of a mutual thing in the end. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't kind of regret it, you know, I wish, because I, I ended up in, in, on good terms with Wigan. 
and played four and a half great years. Like I said, I ended up on a grand final win, which that's the way to go out if you're going to go out. We'll move on. We'll come back and speak a bit more about Matty in a bit. Let's let's look at the Super League season that starts on Thursday. Wigan Warrington first yeah. game, of course. Matty, you ended last season with Warrington. Yeah. Um, obviously, the, I think I, I can't remember if it was me or Drew you told this about. You know, Warrington was sort of keen to maybe keep you on, but yeah. um, Warrington was keen to keep you on, but maybe you looking at they've got Blake and, and Gareth Widdop in the halves. Yeah. So it's going to be difficult for you to be playing week in week out. Mm. Can they get the Super League title that? You know, everyone bangs on about it's their year. Can they, yeah. Do you think they've got it in them to do it? <laughs> I, I definitely do on paper. With the team they've got, I mean, they've signed some great players again this year, haven't they? Um, I think it's that mentally getting over getting over that. It's always their year kind of thing. When it comes to the end of the year, they don't seem to quite get over the line. You know, Steve Pratt, they've definitely got the coach in place, fantastic coach, really enjoyed my time under him. And, and like you said, the players they've signed, the players that have already been there, been there for years, like Sir Cooper, mm. you know, Hill, Ratchford, building a team around those guys, brilliant. I mean, the halfbacks so exciting, are they? You know, Gareth Widdop and Blake Austin. You know, if, if Blake can, you know, kick on again this year and do what he did last year, you know, they always give themselves a chance. And I think on paper they're probably one of the best teams in the league. There's no doubt about that. But it's mentally getting over that, you know, of of. of you know, the Challenge Cup was difficult, I think, for them last year because winning a Challenge Cup and then going on to win Super League is a tough thing to do. You know, yeah. I did it back in 2013. And, and after the Challenge Cup, we lost six or seven games yeah. on the bounce. So mentally getting yourself up for it again after just such a big win is difficult. But So I think that kind of didn't help them last year. But, you know, having said that, great teams go on and do it and, and win. Yeah, and, and at Wembley they were very much underdogs, weren't they? No one really yeah, gave yeah. a chance. Yeah. So obviously that sort of almost suited their mentality because yeah. it was like they almost had nothing to lose. Mm. Um, you mentioned Price. I mean, he must have been Price in his third season now at, at Warrington. Yeah. And I must admit, he's a lot different, I find, with the press than he was when he first came over. He's a lot yeah. more jovial and he seems to have got a bit more comfortable with the surroundings yeah. at, at Warrington. Um, what about Wigan then, from an Adrian Lamb point of view and, and how they did last season? Where obviously they had the nightmare at the start, but they ultimately came good in the end, and although they yeah. didn't reach the grand final, they did at least show some signs that you know Adrian Lamb had stabilised it a little bit. Yeah, I think he's done well. Yeah, I think he's done a good job. Um, Works with the mentality again. They always find a way, don't they? They always, you know, know over what the, is going on throughout the end. Only had a poor start, but they, they came good at the end when it mattered. I know they didn't quite get over the line in the end. And them games probably took too much out of them, but. Um, they'll always be there and they're about to win. The mentality is work hard, play hard, and, and, and that gets you quite a long way, you know. Um, but in, in my time at Wigan, we weren't always the best side on paper, but you knew it was going to be under a fight. We'd never let a game go. Um, and even probably the underdogs in both finals, we played Warrington and we come through and won both of them games. So, yeah, I think they'll be there and they're about to win. Again, they've signed really well. I think Hastings, massive signing yeah. for them. You know, of the year he had last year, uh, good half back. So you know, make building your team around him will be good. But um, yeah, I suppose they're, they're going to be learning about again, definitely. I think it's important to remember last last season at Wigan there was all the talk around Sean Edwards yeah, as well yeah, at the, the, the middle point of the season, yeah. and and that's when Wigan were, were just losing and losing. They, they turned it around in the the final third of the season uh, after they got over the Sean Edwards thing and. After it was announced that Adrian Lamb will be coach. Well, they also uh, have the George Williams, Williams thing as well, yeah, and then obviously yeah, Gabe Hamlin had the, the issue as well. Hardacre still had the hangover yeah. from the previous sort of off season as well, so they did have to deal with that. Yeah. And I think um, Morgan Smith is all the and Liam Byrne coming into into the first team. They were sensational for Wigan yeah. because obviously the, Wigan lost Hamlin and they lost to Limitotai, two regular first team forwards. Um, and they were already low on props anywhere as it was, but Partington and Smithy and, and Bird came and did a fantastic job. Um, Matty, you've been in the systems at Wigan. Yeah. It's a, a lot of Super League clubs, it's normally the first what, 1 to 20 who play the part, but at Wigan it's, it, it really is all the, your yeah. squad, isn't it? Yeah, and that's what's good about the club, I suppose. You know, they use every single team, every single team member throughout the year. You know, Wayne, he did it, he was great at producing the young lads. and. I mean, you'll see it again this year. There'll be another two or three that will come up and play games, like Morgan Smithies, like um, Ollie and Ollie Pants. And so, uh, you know, there's a young lad, halfback I coached in the academy a little bit, and um, Harry Smith, his name was, and he's, you know, another great young lad, halfback coming through. So, 
Uh, I expect some, you know, big things from him in the next couple of years. So it's, you know, they always produce great players, like like your big other big clubs, you know, Warrington Saints, Leeds, you know, they produce really good players year on year. Uh, but Wigan are probably the best at doing that for, for me. Do you think that's? I always I always talk about Warrington in this regard, where if you look at Leeds Saints, Wigan, the, the most successful teams have always been built around players they've brought for themselves. Warrington have never quite been able to get that right, have they? In terms of yeah, they can buy players in from elsewhere, but they've never quite been able to get the core of players coming through the Warwick yeah. system. We're starting to see it a bit now with like Joel Philbin and players like that. Yeah. Do you, do you think that having that homegrown talent is actually the that missing ingredient for winning a Super League title? How important do you think that local presence yeah. is? I think it's massive, yeah. I think it's massive because it gives, especially the amount of games you have throughout the year as well and how demanding the games are. You know, it's, it's getting faster, it's getting stronger, you know, everyone's getting bigger, mm. you're getting more injuries. So having bigger squads and good young lads coming in. I mean, we'll see how Toronto do this year. And obviously, there's no young yeah, lads yeah. coming through. They've got, I think they've got 22, is it? 23 yeah, yeah. players in the squad. If they get a few injuries, that's when you rely on your young lads coming in doing a great job. So, um, we'll see how they go. Hopefully, you know, they'll, they'll have a lot of luck with injuries, but if they don't, then they'll be struggling. Um, and like you say, yeah, so that then bigger clubs and bigger teams, the more players, the more youth coming through the systems is, is obviously you know, works works out well for them. Uh, how do you think Wigan will start? Do you think we'll start with Hardacre at fullback and French in the halves or French in the, at fullback and uh, Zach in the centre? I think that what's coming out of there is, is Hardacre is going to play centre and, and French will be, yeah. you know, French will be at fullback. He's obviously, he's, you know, I've heard that he's killed it throughout pre season. Um, he's a freak in training and, and we've seen glimpses of that, didn't we, yeah, last year? Yeah. I mean, when we played at Warrington, well, sorry, when Warrington played when I was there and, um, when, when I played him, uh, when I played for Catalans as well, he was one of the outstanding players. So um, I think he'll come on again. He's had, he's had that kind of year of bedding in now, and he. So I think you do usually see, you know, these Australians come over in the second year is, is unbelievable. So I think he's definitely one to watch this year. Yeah. I one team that I I sort of got me on is Huddersfield because I think Huddersfield have sort of you know they're not fashionable club and yeah. you know people never really talk much about them, but they seem to have got a clutch of really good young well, players together yeah, yeah. that they brought for, and of course they've had McGill for him, Leroy Kudrow and players like that for many years, but the likes of Darnell McIntosh, they've got Ollie yeah. Russell in there, and they've got the senior twins, they, they've got they've got a couple of good forwards, obviously Adam O'Brien's cracking on a bit now, in his mid-twenties probably nearly, but he's still yeah. a good prospect, Ollie Wilson, Matty English, they've added Aidan Caesar, who you know looks yeah, like a yeah. you know a top top player, yeah. do, you, do you think that's something at Huddersfield, that, that core of sort of homegrown talent can help Huddersfield propel to maybe defy expectations and maybe go better than what people are thinking. Yeah, I think that, you know, like when Kudjo first come through, a very, very raw player, wasn't he? he was, obviously, they're all athletes, like McIntosh was an athlete. Mm. You know, he's, he's fast, he's strong, he's big. I think it's probably the skill side of things, more so for, for Huddersfield, the, the younger lads. But the more they develop, the better they're going to get. And like you said, they, them players have been in the the league now for a couple of years so they've come on leaps and bounds and I think the young lads there are really really good at doing like McGilvery he's obviously been there for a number of years but like adding Aidan Caesar and you know Kenny Edwards a player that yeah. obviously at Catalan's great fantastic player uh, and he can add some you know on that on whichever edge you play so they're going to be dangerous this year definitely and I think they played did they play Catalan's first game yeah, they're at Catalans, yeah. That'll be interesting to see how, how, how they go there. And of course, there's been quite, I mean, to be fair, looking through the signings here, there's been quite a few, like, decent, you know, really quite good signs. Like Catalan have got James Maloney, yeah. uh, who's come in as, yeah. as half back there. He's probably on more money than you were, Mike, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, Huddersfield have got Aidan Caesar. Hull have recruited really well. Maybe yeah. not not perhaps in the key positions, but certainly in the outside backs in the pack. They've got some, like, massive units, like, I mean, they're, my, they're always big old. Yeah, like, like, like Maya Fanu is probably going to be just chilling out in the in the centre yeah. or the wing or something, yeah. and you're just like you wouldn't fancy running at him, would you? No, he's he's a he's a big man. <laughs> yeah. They always seem to have big outside backs, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Josh big Griffin's not small backs. as well, is he? Yeah. No, he's not. And then they call him Manu Mal, the ter the Tongan Terminator, aren't they? Which yeah. sounds scary enough before you even run into. <laughs> um, Hull, I mean, even Hull KR, I know a lot of people are writing off Hull KR and and saying that they're gonna they're probably the favourites for relegation. Mm. But I mean, Sean Kenny Dowell's a decent pick up for them from Australia. Yeah. Um, I think Hull KR are one of them teams where, and I suppose you'll know this as well, when you've got these young players, it can either go one or two ways, can't it? They either, you're not expecting yeah. a great deal of them, but if they actually 
overshoot your expectation and do really well, yeah. it can help lift you up. Yeah. Definitely. And I think Hulk are probably in that situation, aren't they? If their clutch youngsters perform better than expected, that's what's going to maybe drag them up the league. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, you know, I know Hull, uh, London ended up getting relegated last year, but they surprised a hell of a lot mm. of people, didn't they? Because if you obviously if you underestimate anyone now, you can get burnt. And they're, they're a young side, but like you say, if they can gel, you know, he's a great signing, Kenny Dow, really, really good signing for them. Um, but if they can gel and they can, you know, get that team spirit going, um, then anything can happen. But um, I'd say they were obviously would, would be one of the two, one yeah, of the things to go down. If, if I'm truly honest, but you never know. I think the important thing with Kenny Dell is that he struggled with injuries over the last couple of seasons. Mm. So it's just a matter of Hulk Yard managing, hopefully keeping him fit and yeah. firing because. Obviously, we, we, we've seen it with uh, Akilo Arte at last mm -hmm. season. He came as a, a massive name uh, from the NRL, and he only played a handful of games, and obviously he, he would have been one of the highest earners at, at Huddersfield. So I, I just hope, for Hull KR's sake, that um, they, can, they can see the best of him, and I, they I will do, play plus 20 games. I do feel a bit sorry for Hull KR, because they do seem to have this injury sort of curse. Obviously, Haraki's gone down, hasn't he? Obviously, Massimo Soy had that you know, yeah. horrendous horrendous thing obviously we wish him all the best you know not just from a rugby point of view but from a yeah. personal point of view uh, uh, as well is that something you've noticed Matty over the years more injuries than from when maybe you were playing 10 years ago do you feel like when you're in a squad now there seems to be more injuries than there used to be I think so yeah and I, you know the, the recovery side of things has got a lot better as well and but I think just the sheer people are getting bigger stronger Training's obviously different now, it's, it's more intense. Um, so I think, just on that aspect, I think there is quite a, a lot of injuries, but I think that the physios do a great job by getting people on the pitch as well, because, you know, people do play with injuries now. It's, mm. you know, you think, you think you turn out week in, week out, feeling 100%, you don't. You know, I've played all my career through, you know, especially the Wigan days, you know, me AC joint falling off and, it's just, yeah. but you you try and, you know you get try and get through the games and you, as best you can. But I think big injuries. There's there's more now. You know, mm -hmm. like see your knees, you know, two crucial ligament injuries, your ankles. Um, you know, impacts obviously break breaks as well. You know, I've certainly got a lot more injuries as I've got older uh, as well. But as the, you know, as the as the seasons have gone on. I think Jack Hughes, Jack Hughes was obviously the ruptured testicle thing, which sounds dreadful. But he was saying to me, I think, before the Great Britain thing, that he played a lot through, mm. he'd been having a lot of injections and yeah. stuff to help him through the back yeah. end uh, of the season. Do you think it'll get to a point where players start breaking that much that they've got to revise how the game's played? Because it does yeah. feel like you're almost looking at 13 machines now. You know, and obviously it doesn't look like, it doesn't feel like if you're not, you know, if you're not six foot two mm. and, you know, not got an ounce of fat on you, you've not really got any chance of playing. Whereas, you know, traditionally, you might have a little I bit. Know, <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but, but obviously, you know, like it is hard, a lot harder for the you know the little halfbacks yeah. to be buzzing around or to have a you know a rake thing winger or even like a you know I always remember Neil Baines in the championship come off the bench, they just roll him on and he absolutely kill it for for twenty minutes and then yeah. and then go off. Is it a lot harder for that to happen? And do you think that at some point the game's going to have to maybe step back from generating thirteen robots and maybe going back to a bit more like you said before, back looking at the skill side? Yeah, I think, like I mentioned, that the recovery side of things is a lot better now. I mean, throughout the year, you know, you always start pre-season, always starts on 100 mile an hour. You know, you do your fitness testing, you try and get as big as you can, you try and get as fit as you can. And then once the game start, then it does die down because I think a game now, 18 minute game, takes quite a lot out of you. And especially for someone my age, you know, it probably takes, you know, three or four days just to get over that. Mm. So the recovery thing is big and... and looking after players a lot more and, and, and like your physios and there's not just one physio now you've got two at some clubs three at some clubs you know you you kind of the, the things you've got to look after yourself um, you know you, you get given a lot more now than, than what you did back when I, when I first started playing but um, I think that that side of it recovery as long as you recover the right way and do the right things um, I think you know you, 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 you'll be okay but you can't stop them you know injuries that the breaks. I mean, look at Paul Mossy. Like it's just a, a freak accident, which is, you know, turned his life upside down. His family. So it's, you know, the the they're just the, the occasions that you, you know, you, you never want to see. Mm. You, you know, especially being a part of that game would, would have been would have been awful for the OKR lads. But um, you know, it does happen, and and 
where you've just got to look after yourself the best you can. I, th- I think the length of the season plays a part as well yeah. in, in relation to injuries because even even part time uh, in the championship and league one, they're playing plus thirty games a season now, um, which I, it's just it's it's ridiculous, especially with the, the 1895 Cup and. Last year there was the Yorkshire Cup in pre-season, so I think mm. Bradford played about seven friendlies mm. uh, in the Yorkshire Cup as well. I think the length of the season needs looking at. You, we, we always we always seem to compare Super League and the NRL because they're the two uh, fully professional leagues in the world. But if you look at the NRL season, I think that starts in March and it ends in, in in September, whereas yeah. we start in January and we finish yeah. in October, and then we've got then we want to also play internationals on top of that. Uh, so our top end players are having to play for another month uh, at the end of the season and then they're only finishing early December sometime. Is the general feeling like that the players don't want to play the loop fix would rather than not be the loop fixes in Super League, you know, like you're playing that extra six games, whatever it is? Well they just want the home and away or do they not um, mind the playoffs? So? I think I don't see why you have to play a team three times. Yeah, just <laughs> twice <laughs> home and away. I don't get what the the big deal is about that, why you have to do that. But and, and again, you know, like I think with the, with the Challenge Cup being the, the you know the time it is as well, maybe I mean I know Magic's a, a great weekend mm-hmm. in it for for everyone in rugby league, and I certainly have enjoyed that Magic weekend. But whether that would be the start, the kick off of Super League, I'd like to see maybe. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, I think we do obviously play you know a lot of games now, and especially in the Championship. I think with that added cup of the you know as well, and and lads, you know, I see lads coming. I don't work, obviously I'm not working at the minute and um, I just get to train and play rugby in the day and, and train on my own but lads are coming in off site like at 5 o'clock, <laughs> turn up at Windows, covered in mud, you know they've got to do a 9 to 5 job, then train, they're only getting home at 9 o'clock, they've got to do that, you know, Monday to Friday, then we train Saturday morning then they play Sunday, mm. they're doing that all year, yeah. you know it's just so if you're not man of the match every week, Matty, I'll be knocking on your door. You think um, I'd be losing one? <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll, we'll just run through a few more of these Super League teams. Leeds are another team who've recruited um, Luke Gale, half-back, obviously came in. Cruz Lehman from Huddersfield, Matt Pryor from Australia, Alex Mellor from Huddersfield. Leeds obviously had a couple of seasons in the doldrums a little I, bit. Are they going to get back up there? I, I think it's, it's, it is a risk signing Luke Gale. Um, he's a fantastic player, don't, don't get me wrong. He's a former uh, Man of Steel, obviously, but... He's not played a competitive match in 18 yeah, months, yeah, um, yeah, no. which is a very long time. <laughs> but I think if he, if he can get back to his best, then obviously Leeds can fire, but uh, it's, it's a big risk. But then the prospects of Luke Gale and Rob Louie on paper, uh, that's a And they've got Miles still, combina- don't forget, as well. Uh, yeah. combination as well. Back, so-called yeah. back up, I don't know if he'll, he'll play yeah. Miles. Well, I, th- I think he's run an interview this week, Miley, that... Um, He's, he's open to playing at Oker as well, uh, yeah. an interchange with Brad Dwyer. So. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but, but I think on paper, Leeds have got a solid team, but obviously yeah. it's, it's about... They've had, they've had, they've had a solid team the last two seasons. Well, exactly, team. exactly. It's about all about putting the jukes all together, isn't there's it? There's a lot of half movement, because obviously you've seen Cassa sign Danny Rich from Saints. Obviously Salford have got Kev Brown and, and Chris Atkin coming. We mentioned Gale. Obviously Maloney's gone to, to Catalan Caesar's gone to Woodersfield. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of obviously Widdipen at Warrington, um, Hastings gone to Wigan. So almost like almost every team is operating off a new yeah. halfback combo. Which you see now that they go with that yeah. as well, because it usually takes you know a couple of couple of months to actually when they start playing to really you know get them combinations right. But um, yeah, I think it, it's exciting, isn't it? I think some like you said, James Maloney, what a player he's mm-hmm. been over the course of his career, fantastic player. And obviously, like somewhere to Catalans, but. I think Gale as well. Just yeah. going back on what you said, I think if if in hindsight if he can get it right, I think you know he keeps injury free. What well, can be a, a great sign for them? You know, he's a fantastic player, Gale. I've been in England, set up with him. He really, really understands the game, and obviously ex Man of Steel. So he, I, I hope him, I hope he, him all the best because I think you know he, he'd be really, really good for Leeds if he can stay, stay injury free. I think we can we can be excited about Castleford though because yeah. if you look at, at Danny Richardson and James yeah. Rubin in the halves, they, they, you, you, I, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want to big, big them up too much, but they could be there for the next ten years, yeah. and then they could be uh, halves for GB in England for the next five or ten years. Yeah. But then That's at the same time, I worry if it goes wrong at some point this season, have they got anyone? Is the experience there mm. to mm. you know you know sometimes you need an old head sometimes to grab a game and yeah. and sort of you know 
them two have got uh, one of them is almost going to have to step up. And I know Truman has to be fair yeah. in, in previous games, so it will be interesting to see how that. Uh, and he, he'd have learned a lot. I know he did play, but from the GB setup, you know, yeah. learning off players, you know, there as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see that and how it goes because I mean, Danny Rich has come out and said about. Um, how good it is to working with three half back, ex half backs, mm. and, and which will be good for him, you know, to kind of hopefully get his game going now. He had a difficult year last year, obviously, but the year before that, you know, really, really did dream well, team. didn't he? And, and he got in the dream team, yeah. So the potential is obviously there, isn't it? Um, but if he can learn off them type of coaches, you know, ex, ex half backs, like I mentioned. You know, he's going to do it at Cass because... I, w I wonder which half-back's going to be frozen out at Saints this year then, because they've done it yeah. two successive seasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It was funny actually because I was speaking to Danny Rich and he said that to me about obviously his journey with Powell and Danny Orr and Ryan Sheridan. And it made me feel old because he's a Widness lad and he didn't remember Ryan Sheridan playing for Widness back in yeah. the early 2000s, so that made me feel old. Um, but alas, anyway, Toronto then, we'll, we'll talk... It's that number seven jersey, that Is that what you reckon? Talent. So we've got yeah, seven in the world. He should have actually retired it after longer. Yeah. 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 Kyle got it, he ended up going Union, all the fans like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got it, obviously that happened, and Danny Rich got yeah. it, so retire it. Oh, we'll start that, that's a good thing. Um, moving on to Toronto, what do you make of that? Obviously we mentioned a little bit the squad depth is a massive, a massive, massive worry for them. Yeah. What do you think about the whole asking for more room on the salary cap and, and all that? I think they, in, in a lot of ways they, they need it because they've not got that youth set up. Yeah. So they're giving them 22, 23 players quite good money, aren't they? So it, from their respect, they, they want they want that because they want to get a bigger team, a, a bigger squad together. Um, I don't think they should have it, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm truly honest. I think everyone should you know, have the same rules. Um, but we we did a training session against them witness uh, a couple of weeks before a couple of weeks ago now and um, you know they, you look at down the squad it's pretty, it's a decent squad I mean the halfbacks have got quite a lot of experience between them Joe Miller obviously was up with this previous I like Joe I think he's a great player obviously Wilkin throughout them through the middle they just signed Sonny Bill I like the fullback Gaz O'Brien mm -hmm. he's got a lot of skill it's just for them it, it is that kind of if they get a few injuries in key positions mm -hmm. I can't see them. You, know, you can see them going down, couldn't you? Just yeah, because of well, that. they run out of bodies. Because what, what are they going to do? Like, you know, what if, if, if they end up, say, they get five or six injuries and they've only got 16 players, are they going to name 16? Like, how's that going to work? Well, it's a 21 man squad now. Well, they've they? got a name. <laughs> they've been naming everybody, won't they? So they've done a name. Ryan and Dave might have to play. Well, yeah. I, think, I think they might be um, Joe Reggie with the League One oh, club sometimes. No. Yeah. Yeah. So they could have some uh, League One players on the round. League yeah. One players. Right, next on the line, who's winning the Super League this season? Grand final. I, I, th I think we're going to... I don't think... No, we'll, you would say that. No, but... I, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I think... I've done my, I've done my tips. Uh, I think Saints will, will have the league leaders, but I think, like Matthew was mentioning before, that the mindset that we're going to have themselves in um, sometimes is incredible. Uh, and sometimes you just know we're going to want to win a game um, and they'll just grind you down to the ground. Um, and I've, I've seen it happen many a time before. Uh, we were speaking off camera before about the Wigan Warrington game in 2016 where I think Warrington were like 28 points to 14 up and Wigan had Ben Flower sent off and then the, the sending off of Ben Flower seemed to put something in the minds of Wigan uh, and they, they turned it around, Matty added yeah. a drop goal and, and Anthony Geller who's now a Warrington player uh, went and got the winning try. Uh, I just think w Wigan's mindset at times when when they click and they, they put their minds to something, uh, they can do something special. But uh, then, then again, you look at Saints, they won the league by 16 points last year, so... I'm going Saints just for that. I'm just going for Saints because I just can't see how they drop just, off. Yeah, I find it strange point. how everyone else has made these massive signings in Super League. Obviously, yeah. Warrington have got Widdup, up. Uh, obviously, Gale's gone to Leeds and we're going to sign Aces and Burgess. But obviously, Saints have not signed anyone. Yeah. So, but it's like... Well, you, you don't fix it if it's not broken, but then yeah. again, at the same time, when you've got all your competitors are assigning marquee forward. players, yeah. then what surely you, think, you, you think, mate? But I, I, I agree with that. Really, there's been not much change with Saints. So on that fact, I would, I would, if I was picking now, if I was putting money on someone, I would say Saints. Um, but again, you know, Wigan have signed one, you know, in Hastings, one of the best players in the league at the minute. So. And, and I would never say never write off the Saints, I would, I would never mm. ever write off Wigan because of that. 
because well, of I mean, that even mentality. last season, they, they still, you were still sort of twitching, weren't you? Even though Saints were so yeah. bad last season, when it got to the playoffs, you were still sort of, oh, we're going to get a bloody deal, yeah, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, Well, that's, that's, the, that's the, again, that's the mentality they've got. That's the club they are. They're never beaten and, and um, they're always in a game. Mate. You know, no matter how well they're going, how bad they're going, they're always in a game to win it. So it's, um, in big games, that's what you need as well, isn't it? That's what, I mean, we did, I think in 2013, we played Warrington in the grand final and, we was down 30 points this summer, I think, yeah. you know, oh sorry, not 30 points, I think we were was down it, three tries, yeah, yeah I three it, tries it, and like 14 or something, yeah, yeah. and, yeah. and we ended up coming back you know, and winning the game 30 points to yeah. the summer, so, it, it, you know, you, Wigan have got that way of, of in the big games to, to, to win. But, but that's, in, that's credit to, to Wigan's coach and the academy there as well, because yeah. the kids have that mindset, as soon as they're, yeah. they're promoted to the first team, they have that mindset, whereas yeah. you see it at some other clubs, some kids you know they're inexperienced and, you, and they'll be targeted but when when Smithies were thrown in at the deep end this year uh, and it's, it's happened in previous it's like years, 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 years yeah. yeah exactly yeah. and when he like his third or fourth third Super League game making 72 tackles that it's that, that's that's freakish that, and that's, they'll benefit again from that won't they this year you know yeah. another another year on them, them lads will, will be even better so and but, yeah, I just think Saints said that they've not had that much change. I don't think changed the yeah. coach, so you never know. That's going to go down here and what what he kind of brings in, what he doesn't. Uh, but but I, I can see if they play like they did last year, yeah. you know, they're going to be tough to beat, obviously. But then again, we always say about Warrington every single year. Yeah. We go, you, you have a look at all the teams on paper and the squads are squad numbers are announced, and you always think Warrington, they, Warrington could do that. Mm. Well, it, you won't be surprised if Warrington went on to win the grand final, would you? But it's. It, but it's then, that monkey off the Warrington back, yeah, seems to have the opposite mindset of Wigan at times, whereas it's, oh, I don't mean they do it on purpose, but War Warrington are, are not very confident when it comes to big games and, and the big moments yeah. and the high pressure moments, whereas Wigan seems to excel in that. And, and that's the same for Castle, yeah. I, put, I put Castleford in that bracket as I, well. I don't think you, you wouldn't be, anyone wouldn't be surprised if Warrington Saints Wigan won it, would yeah. Which that, is there any other teams that What about Hull? What about, what about Hull? Hull? Because Hull always, yeah. Hull always look good on paper as well, but they struggle with con they they seem to struggle massively with consistency throughout the season. Yeah, I I think Hull again, they, they, like you said, they, they didn't name players there. Yeah. They, they've bought quite well. Um, a lovely Radford, I think he's just dead <laughs> yeah. honest. You know, he's, he's he reminds me a little bit of, of Sean Wayne in that respect. When you see him on camera, I don't really know much mm -hmm. much about him in terms of the coaching, but he, he's just he's just he says it as it is, and I like that about him. Um, he'll tell he'll tell us. You know when when he thinks the team's played awful, mm -hmm. and it, it'll, it'll, and the other the other way. So I do like Lee Radford, and I hope they do well because I, I like all I like Lowell as a club. Um, they've obviously had a lot of success in the Challenge Cup, but like you said, that consistency level mm -hmm. of what it takes to win a league, to win a league leaders, to get yourself where you need to be to, to come and win the grand final. They've not they've not had that, and, um, and that's what you need to do it. So consistency wise, we will see how they go. What about going down then? Hulk are favourites, are we saying that's what we think? I, I'd, I'd predicted Hulk are to, to finish bottom. Um, and I've, I've predicted Toronto to finish 11th, just, just above them. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I'd agree with that, but I just think it all depends on injuries. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if Toronto get a few injuries, especially in key positions, because you, you see them easily yeah. going down. Like, like you wouldn't think Wakefield, but when they had the terrible injury run last season, they found themselves right at the bottom, and it was only really with two or three weeks to go. We thought, well, it went down yeah, to the final day, didn't yeah. it? The, the four at the bottom last season. I think, I think Toronto, will, and they'll all, they'll all know this. You know, it's Brian Mack is an experienced coach. You'll be telling them as well. But they found it so easy last year, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> you know, going out, the players going out week in week out, putting points yeah, on teams. Something. It's going to be obviously a different scenario this year, isn't it? Of of going to Saints, going to Wigan, different kind of challenge, and. Um, it's whether they can deal with that, you know, staying in the game, being in the game, you know, because it's not going to be over in the first half. Yeah. It's yeah. going to go to the and ground. Then, and like you said before about the recovery thing, yeah. if they have a tough game with Saints in Canada, say, and then the following week they've got to play Hull, yeah. or, or even they're away somewhere, it's going to be very difficult. It's mm. a bit different with all due respect to the championship teams to, yeah. you know, running in 50 at home and then having to yeah. play Rochdale away or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, hopefully this season, Matt, you'll be the one doing all the uh, heavy wins in the championship there. Um, I wanted to ask you about two things from earlier in your career while you were here. You, obviously, when you were a kid, you were, you were at Everton football. Yeah. And I'm sure you've been asked this question a million and one times. 
Do you? I re- <laughs> <laughs> but do you do you do you, re- do you regret going down the rugby road? Um, no. You won't be you won't be in this office. In your <laughs> I mean, rugby league has given me you know given me everything really. Given me a lot um, in terms of support. So you know everything. I, I've, I'm so privileged to have played the game for at the highest level. Well, the yeah, highest level in this country for 14 years. Obviously playing championship this year, which I'm really looking forward to. But um, yeah, the football was great. I think for me development in rugby as well, mm. and I think that's important for kids all over. You can't just play one game for 40, 50. I mean, people do, but I think playing a number of sports helps you, especially like the professionalism and the preparation yeah, yeah. and stuff like Definitely, that. Definitely, yeah, and. Um, yeah, so I mean, I love playing football. I mean, I grew up from, from four or five years old playing football, local team, and um, going through obviously all the age groups uh, down at Pilkington's and St. Helens. And, and then, you know, I was at Wigan Athletic first and, and, and um, got signed for them, went through all the school boys. And then Everton come in, yeah, watched me in a, a St. Helens town game and um, come in and said they, they had to sign me at that time because I was already at Wigan Athletic. They had to sign me so they couldn't bring me on trial. So they signed me from then, yeah, 14, oh sorry, no, it was earlier than that, it was, it was like 12, yeah, 12, 13, and I had, you know, great years there, Lo- loved it there, um, obviously Boywood Club as well, mm-hmm. still go and watch them now, so it's, it was a great, yeah, great time, but then I got released from Everton, and, and you know, that's when the rugby really kicked in then, um, and I kind of fell out, with, not fell out of love with football, but I think when you get released like yeah, that, yeah, you, you kind of turn your attentions to, yeah. to somewhere else, and having stayed on and maybe football would have, would have been making a living out of it, I'm not quite sure, but you know, I would never regret anything about turning to rugby league. It's, is, it, is it mad now when you get to the point where you've obviously gone part-time, you, you know you're going to have to do this transition at some point yeah. to where you know, you've basically been a professional athlete your whole life, is that yeah. a bit of a mad transition for you to have to, is yeah. it quite daunting to think it's about? It's scary, like? yeah, obviously, yeah, I mean you think it's going to last forever, I know everyone says that, you know, it's going to last forever this, but um, it obviously doesn't, and, and you've got to change your, your mindset. And I think that the going part time in, in the championship might be a blessing in disguise for me because, you know, I'd all, although I'd never say never to full time again in Super League, you know, I think for me at this point in my career, it's about getting back and joining the rugby. Um, and I've not done that for, for two or three seasons now, uh, but it's probably been since the, the days at Wigan, to be quite honest with you. But, um, you know, it's about enjoying rugby, but looking at what I'm going to do next. Mm. And getting things in place, and obviously being part time, you can go to college, you can, you can, you know, do what whatever you want really, and that and that's my intention to do that. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my level three coaching badge done, and hopefully do a degree in coaching, and and see what happens. But, um, well, yeah. hopefully you'll be a, a super player with witness in 2021. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on a serious note, though, how's it all gone at, at, at witness since you? And and where yeah. where are you saw where do you feel witness are at in terms of competing in, in championship? I think they're. I think they're obviously up there. I've, I've loved my time so far. I mean, I've been at the club before, to back in two thousand and eight, um, and and that's probably one of the reasons why I chose Witness because I knew the club, I knew the history behind the club. I'd been there. Not quite a lot of people was, was there then, especially in the office and mm. stuff like that. I still there now. Um, and obviously met Tim Sheens, and he was he was great. He's I've spoken to Tim in the past before about signing. Um, you know, who'd, who'd not want to work with Tim Sheens? I think. F- you know, from a playing point of view, obviously still learning, you know, even at 32. But, you know, if I want to go into coaching, who, who better to learn mm. off than Tim? So, um, yeah, that was a big reason. But, yeah, just I'm just enjoying it. I think just enjoying being around the lads. It's, you know, there's some, some great young lads at Witness. You know, really exciting to, to play. We've played with quite a few of them as well before. And then you've got the old old man like me in the middle of it all. Uh, obviously, Logan. Slowing down. Logan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doing my best anyway. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm just I'm enjoying it, and like I said, for me, it's about enjoying rugby and getting out there with a smiley face, and and hopefully be successful because I think winners have got a chance. Definitely, um, you know, everyone's talking about you know your Lees and and, and rightly so because they, they they're a good side. You know, but Lee, you know, you got Toulouse, you've got you know Fev, are probably up there. Mm-hmm. London, obviously, are up there, uh, and we just. Yeah, do you feel like, is that, that what you yeah. feel like? You feel like no one's really talking about witness so much, and that obviously yeah. suits you. Yeah, it suits us, doesn't it? I don't think there's no, you know, no, it's not. There is pressure, obviously, because you know the fans want you to win. Yeah. You know, there's pressure with it, and, and you bring pressure on yourself because you want to do well. But you know, we're going quietly, quietly confident, and and you know, hopefully, we'll get off to a good start this weekend at Oldham, and and, and we go from there. But we definitely got the squad to 
to upset a few people. And obviously you played with Logan at, at, at Wigan, mm. was, was Jack Owens at Saints yeah. a bit when you were there as well, so you've got quite a nice, I mean when you look at the one six seven nine that Witness have got, yeah. I mean it's up there with anybody who's in, in Championship really, with, with Danny yeah. Graven as well, he was probably a bit too young, yeah. was he, when you were at Witness last time? He was, yeah, but he, what a great player he is, I mean even to see the, you know, the, the trial games, you see glimpses of Danny, and, um, you know, I'm not going to discredit the Championship, but he's one that could you know, go up and play Super League without a shadow of a doubt, but yeah, the spine's great, you know, obviously play, stay, play with Logan, play with Jack, love him playing with Danny at the minute, and uh, there's a young Joey Lyons as well, who's a great player, um, and I've played with quite a lot of, you know, Spedding, he was at Saints, and Lynn Cooper was at Saints, obviously Jack Johnson on the wing, he was at Warrington for my time at there, Pat, Pat Moran, so I've played with quite a lot of lads, um, that are already there, but yeah, just, yeah, it's exciting times, and, and hopefully I can be that voice on the pitch for them, and bring experience and, and and hopefully we've got a good balance in the squad, I think we have. Well, all the best for the new season. I'll try not to boo you from, uh, <laughs> too much when you're slowing it down. Uh, at two, well, you probably know this, was it six or more clubs or five or more clubs? Six, I think. Twelve players, right, have had six or more, have played for six or more Super League clubs. Twelve players? There's twelve players, right, and obviously you, because you've had Salford, Crusaders, Wigan, yeah. Saints, Warrington and Catalan, right? Yeah. What, how many of the other 11 just do you reckon? Just trying to look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I reckon you could have played with a couple of these, I reckon. Right. 12 is... Drew can help if you want. Do you, have I told you? Should you should know. He should know. He's the oracle, isn't he? I've played with Brett Ferris. Not all of them, no. Not all of them. But I reckon there's probably... Brett Ferris? No. Mm -hmm. Danny Tickle? Danny Tickle's one. Um. Think of all boys. Obviously, like join in in the comments. <laughs> James Robin. <laughs> no, James Robin. We could we'll, we'll get him uh, in for a one cool one. Um, Put him on the spot here. Well travelled, well travelled. Well They're not doing very well. I thought. It's <laughs> <laughs> shocking, really. Go on, uh, then, give us one. Any, any. Mike, there's a couple of. Maxie. No. No, there's a couple of. Um, there's a couple of Saint, former Saints players. In fact, there's one, two, three lads who've played for Saints. You, you really should get, I'd say. The Saints, right. Think about um, think about Saints around the, the, the Daniel Anderson era. Keith Mason? No. Well, we're going to have to end the show because... Uh, <laughs> right, are you giving up? Right, yeah, so well, the 12 well. players, obviously Matty Smith, we've got Scott Moore, Scott, you got there. Oh. Yeah. Nick Fozard, right. Lee Gilmore, they were the Saints connections, Tommy Lee, Oh, yeah, Tommy Lee. I should have got that. Tommy Lee's been about 10 Tommy Lee's had the most. I, can't think, I think it's eight. Yeah, yeah I think he's... Yeah. Um, Wella Haraki. Right. Because I think he's obviously... He's OK now, but he's, he's had Leeds, Leeds, Cass, yeah. Witness. Yeah. Um, there's obviously Salford a few more. Salford for a bit. OK, obviously. Richard Moore. Right, oh, yeah. Richard Moore, yeah. Jordan Tamsey. Hmm. Jamie Thackeray. He was actually come out of time to play for Whitehaven this yeah, season yeah, as well. Yeah. Oliver Wilkes yeah. is the other one. And then this one you'd have never have got, Wayne McDonald. No. Which surprised me because I, I, I can only remember him playing with he's I, Yeah, he was at Leeds. He was the, he was the dead sense. tall yeah. back row, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, that was a, a useless first trivia, but I hope people watching well, my, my kids have got, like, in the last two years, well, yeah, they've, they've got four different kits. And they're only two years old. So, wait, that, 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 that's how many gloves are. Well, you, you, you can tell them, because if you know the kids a bit earlier, they've only had a wooden shirt. Yeah, that's it. That's the arm and a leg. Um, but yeah, so, obviously you're going to say Witness is going to win the championship, so who do you think is going to win the championship? Uh, oh, I know who he's going to think. <laughs> who do you think? Wigan Borough, innit? Who do you think is going to win? Oh, you should hear them, though. No, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, right, I'll, I'll, uh, right, I'll send Lee going up. Uh, I, I can't remember the order I've gone, but I think I've gone first. Do we, do we just think that Toulouse, because it's Toulouse. Toulouse, 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 yeah, but... But a way, it's the away ball yeah, thing with Toulouse that you think... Exactly, it's like Catalan, the, the, the quality at home, and you're always back to losing Catalan at home, but it's just how they travel away. They seem to lose and, and games, always been the thing. Toulouse always seem to lose home games towards the start of the season yeah. as well. Yeah. Because I don't know if it's the only light like, playing when it's yeah. nice and sunny or something like that. No, no but I've, I've, I think I've gone first We'll probably play him in July as well. Yeah, we'll play him in August. August, yeah, August. <laughs> yeah, August yeah. The, 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 the middle of <laughs> summer, as you make it yeah, up. We've looked at flights for it, isn't it? Well, you should be seasoned. Oh, yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll have it. <laughs> Fact of 50 <laughs> every day. <laughs> <laughs> 
your nose for Edge anyway. Well, that's, that's it. That's it. it. You'll be able to get on. No, uh, I've gone first league, two to lose, three, five, four, London, five winners. They'll be top five. I've gone for Well, that's it. Matty's no longer speaking to Drew. <laughs> um, have you got your 13 questions? I think there was no before so Matty was announced before then, my prediction. No. <laughs> 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 oh, pressure on Matty. So, 13 quick fire questions. Answer as yep. quick as you can. Uh, Favourite film? Uh, Rocket. <laughs> but I watched it the other day, that's right. <laughs> Best player you played with? Uh, oh, wow, Kim Green. Oh. Sorry, that'd be dumb. He's Charles just hoping you were going to say Sean Sean Lockman. Uh, <laughs> we have to call this the Wigan podcast, I think. You've, you've, you've already mentioned their favourite football club? Everton. Uh, worst moment on a rugby pitch? Losing. Losing grand finals. Greatest moment of your career? Challenge Cup 2013. Yeah. Uh, what what three items would you say from a desert island? Three items. Um, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> beer. <laughs> uh, three things I can't go without, really. Coffee, beer. One more, one more. Um, Oh, actually, no, scrap that. You need them. Oh, the kids! The kids! <laughs> yeah, need, all the kids, I've got three in it. He's got a mug coffee over his kids. He needed a mug to put the coffee in. I thought he was going to say a mug to put the coffee and the beer in. Uh, uh, favourite holiday destination? <sighs> It'd have to be Mexico, can't you? Oh, nice. Um, you, what would be your last ever meal? Um, Sunday roast. Mm. Oh. Easy. Uh, toughest play you've played with? Played with? Um, or against Mickey Mack. Ah, uh, nice. Uh, best song ever. Your <laughs> eyes. Um, oh, it's a tough one. I'd probably say somewhere in Oasis though. All Oasis. And, uh, have you got a karaoke song? Uh, <laughs> I have only because I've seen this book lad do it. It's, uh, it's, it's a bit off the cuff. This Hold of the Moon by the White Boys. Where does it go? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favourite pair of boots you've got? Um, Got to be the ones I'm, I, I wear at the minute, the Predator Adidas. Oh, nice. Sponsored? No. <laughs> <laughs> Never had a sponsor in my life. If you want a sponsor. <laughs> uh, most annoying teammate at Witness? Most annoying teammate at Witness? He's had a bit of two week. He's, a, he's, um, he's added the app window split, I think. Yeah. Onto that question. Oh, most annoying, uh, most annoying teammates ever. Who you have? <laughs> I'd probably say. I'm only because he's wind me up all the time. I'd probably say James Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, and finally, you sporting good Friday, Darby. <sighs> <laughs> I can't believe you've asked. I've got, I've got all, an hour without, without this question. Um, I, honestly, Definitely. I, I'm, I'm on the fence. I'm a St. Helens lad. You know, I'll always be from St. Helens. Sports St. Helens. But I love the club. I love Wigan as well. So I'm going to go drama. <laughs> get on, get on. Drama and then golden point. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Thank you, Matty, for coming on for this first episode of the new season. Thanks, Drew, as always. Do keep it. Loverbleed.com for all the latest. We'll be at the games this weekend. Um, please do leave your comments. We'll see you next week for another show. Thanks for watching.